March. Well, 2020 has truly been a year to remember. And while South Florida sports teams found some welcome success, whether it was in sold out arenas or isolated in a bubble, we sadly also said goodbye to some of our sports heroes. Here's CBS 4's Jim Barry with a look back at this year in sports. Well, Kobe Bryant's tragic death in January of 2020 sent the sports world reeling just a week before the Super Bowl. And that would prove to be just the start of perhaps the most unpredictable sports year we have seen, particularly here in South Florida. In February, Miami hosted the Super Bowl for a record 11th time. The spectacle lit up the South Florida sky as Jennifer Lopez and Shakira put on a dazzling halftime show. Then, Super Bowl MVP Patrick Mahomes lit up San Francisco. The quarterback sparked a Kansas City comeback and led the Chiefs to their first Super Bowl title in 50 years. We have heart. I mean, that's just from day one. Coach, coach pushes us to be the best people that we can be, and we never give up. The big game would mark the last public appearance of legendary coach Don Shula. The Miami Dolphin icon would pass away in May at the age of 90. The man who coached the Dolphins to Super Bowl glory in the 70s with the only perfect season in NFL history was finally eulogized by former players and family. You know, he was our dad, obviously, and, and we, um, but we always knew that he was part of a bigger family than, than ours. Jim Kick and Jake Scott, two other famed members of that 72 team, would also pass away months later. Butler eludes Westbrook for an open three. It's good. The Miami Heat began the Jimmy Butler era by holding their own until March, when the coronavirus pandemic halted the NBA season for four months. When play resumed in a COVID-free bubble in Orlando, the Heat caught fire and stormed through the playoffs. Downhill, couldn't punch it. Bam says, get it out of here. The team developed a swag and a scowl, knocking off favorites Milwaukee and Boston on their way to the NBA Finals before succumbing to LeBron James and the LA Lakers in six games. And for the first time in 17 years, the Marlins are going to the postseason. The Marlins were another pleasant surprise. The team shook off an early season COVID outbreak to reach the playoffs in baseball's abbreviated 60-game season. Insler deals. Swing and a miss, got him, and it's over. And the Marlins are headed to the division series. The Fish swept the Cubs before being swept by the Braves. But their promising turnaround earned Don Mattingly honors as National League Manager of the Year. The Panthers also reached the playoffs, but didn't stay long. After being quickly ousted by the New York Islanders, the hockey team fired General Manager Dale Talon and replaced him with Bill Zito. Major League Soccer made an enthusiastic debut in South Florida with expansion team Inter-Miami. After losing his first five games, the team finally broke through with a win over rival Orlando City. The team also made headlines when its players walked off the field before a match in August, joining a sweeping protest all across professional sports as athletes called for social change in the wake of another police shooting of a black man. Progress was seen in two South Florida teams. The Panthers made Brett Peterson the first black assistant GM in NHL history, and the Marlins hired Kim Eng as baseball's first female GM. The coronavirus pandemic forced the Miami Open to be canceled. In fact, the only pro tennis we got locally was a tournament in which a handful of lesser known players slugged it out on a court in somebody's backyard. The pandemic also forced the Miami Dolphins to adapt in the NFL's first virtual draft. The Miami Dolphins select. The Dolphins took Tua Tungabailo with their first overall pick, pinning hopes on him as their quarterback of the future. After a 3-3 three three start with veteran Ryan Fitzpatrick, the team made Tua its starter in Week 7. The rookies had his moments, but a much improved Dolphin defense has led the team's resurgence and put it in the hunt for a playoff spot. Meanwhile, the University of Miami football team weathered its own COVID outbreak. It was riding high until an ugly late season loss to North Carolina knocked the Canes out of the top 10 and ruined their chances to play in a major bowl game on New Year's Day. Jim Barry, CBS 4 This Morning.